Without fail, this is probably the greatest thing that I'm contributing to WordPress and you are going to love what we're going to do with regards to WebP conversion. Now, before you tune out and go, there's other plugins and there's tools and things I could use, you have not seen anything like this. Let me first show you the problem and why you really seriously need to consider this. It goes without saying that you should use a WebP format for your images on your WordPress website. Don't rely on PNGs or JPEGs, go and get them converted. And like I said earlier, there's loads of websites, tools and plugins that you could use. But here's another problem that a lot of people are not aware of. And I know I've done some code snippets in the past, but you got to watch what we're doing here. This is the greatest snippet code tool I've ever created and I am not lying. So when you add images to your WordPress media library, did you know that there will be duplicate sizes being created in your file and database? Now I know what you're going to say, go over to WordPress media settings, like over here, go and zero out your medium and your large size and you'll be okay. Yeah, that's kind of true, but you will have these other sizes and you will never see them. Because as far as you're concerned, when you go over to your media library, you only ever see one image. Now I have not added any images here yet because I want to show you what happens. Over on my right hand side or above me, you can actually see the uploads folder. So when I drop images into here, you're going to see them generate here and many other sizes appear. And the code I'm going to give you is going to sort them out. And by the way, you don't even have to change these values. You can leave them as they are because my code will sort them out and remove all of the medium, large and other sized images for you with a click of a button. And here's a few more details just to get you excited. When you upload an image, it will convert it to WebP and do a little bit more. What about your legacy images? Say you got a website that's six years old. Maybe it was a directory website and clients and businesses were uploading images and they weren't converting to WebP. Or maybe you had a conversion tool and you run out of credits and it wasn't working properly. Or maybe it fell over, but you never realized. Or maybe people were taking images on really high resolution cameras and images are getting loaded through that are like 20 megabytes. What if they're like 4,000 pixels wide? Why would you need an image that wide? What if you're only ever going to show the images as little images on your website? I am going to show you how we can sort all of that out. And like I said, if you've got legacy images, this code is going to go back into your files and database and sort that out. And it will remove all of the other images. Let's have a look at it. We're looking at my media library right now. And I've loaded in like an MP3, a zipped file, a movie file, Excel, WAF2 for your font, an icon, PDF, PowerPoint, and Word as well, just to show you that they will not be affected by what we're doing. First off, I'm going to add three images to my media library. Now, keep an eye above me, because when I drop this, you're actually going to see them generate, but you won't just see three images appear. One of them is a WebP, one of them is a JPEG, and another one is a PNG, and it's a very big PNG, very, very wide. And I'll go into the details in a moment. But watch above me as to how many files generate. Keep your eyes peeled. We're doing this in real time. Can you see what's happening? So not only have we got one WebP, but we've also got three other sizes. You could say, but yeah, that's because you didn't change your media settings. Well, that would have taken away the 300 if I'd zeroed it out. The 1024 would have appeared. And the reason it's not appeared is because this particular image, if I go and click it, is already 1000 by 1000. Therefore, there was no real need for it to go and do the large. Then we have the JPEG. We've got the original size. And then we have 1536, 1024, 768, 300, and 150. This image, if we go into it, is a JPEG and it's 1920 by 1080. What about the PNG? Well, it's 9.4 megabytes. I hope you can see that on the screen properly. Then we have another version, which is 2048 wide, and it's 2.1. Can you see how we added in one image, 9.4, and it starts to create all of these, and all of these sizes will add up. Now, this particular PNG, if I click on it, is intentionally set to be super big, 3840. We don't need the image to be that big. So we're going to convert them to WebP. We're going to get rid of the other sizes. And we're also going to scale the images to be no larger than 1920. So here's the magic. We're going to go and activate a code snippet. Go and click the link in the video description. It will take you to my site. Go and get it. All right. You don't need to sign up. There's no subscription. You don't have to pay anything. I don't mind if you do send me some money. Thank you very much. Copy it. Paste it. Give it a title. WebP converter is not a bad one. 
and then click activate. Go over to media, you're going to see a new option called WebP Converter. If you don't see that, don't worry, just go and click media and it will appear. As a reminder, we only see three images in our media library, but we can see here we've got all of these other copies that are generated. There was someone I was working with and their website was four gigabytes and the guilty party was the images. They were using another WebP converter as well. For any of you that use tools like this, they don't always work all the time and sometimes you have very little control over exactly what it's doing. So let's go over to WebP converter and you're now in the tool WebP power up next level image optimization I've been working on this for quite a while for a long time because I really wanted to make a difference to all WordPress users this is not tied down to any particular page builder if you're a WordPress user you want to be using this when you upload a new image to your media library it will convert not only that it will scale it down to be a maximum width of 1920. what if you don't want it to be 1920? i'll show you later how we can mess around with that what i'm going to do first off is i'm going to leave that set at 1920. if you want to be ultra sure just go and hit set max size and you'll see it says the max width is set to that if your image is below that it won't change if your image is bigger it will remember we have that png 3840 well watch what happens right keep an eye on the log i'm now going to click convert scale to web p i don't know why i've gone silent but could you see there were things happening above me and on the left hand side over here we now see conversion complete we can now see that it's actually got rid of the other images, but it's converted it to WebP and it's resized it from 3840 to 1920. It hasn't done it to the JPEG or the WebP image because there's no need. They're already below 1920. And you can see over here, we actually have new images added. So you're probably going, well, okay, convert it to WebP, but now you've added in more images. Stay with me on this. So let's go over to the WebP. Well, there was no need for that to convert because it's already a WebP. But if you look at the JPEG, we have the original version, which is now a WebP. The name has not changed. This is important. If you're using an image in your website already, the name does not change. It's the file format that changes. So if you've got a home page and you've already got an image and your hero banner or somewhere else, they will still be there. They'll just be a different format. But what we also have is a 150 thumbnail sized WebP as well. What I have not done is create a WebP for all the other sizes because you know what? I don't want them. And if we go to the PNG, look at that. It's converted into a WebP and then we have a 150 version as well as a WebP. That's for the thumbnail. Now, before I go and click keep main and thumbnail, because this is what you need to do to get rid of all the other sizes. I just want to prove to you that if we go back over to the library and I click on the JPEG, it is a WebP 1920 by 1080. Let's go over to the WebP image. Well, of course, it's still a WebP and it's still 1000 by 1000. You go to the PNG. This is the image that was 9.1 megabytes. It is now 132 kilobytes and it's 1920 by 1080. And you can see here, there it is, 135. I never quite understand why we have a different size. It says 132 and here's 135, whatever. Anyway, it's 135 kilobytes. But look, the copy version that appeared when we first uploaded the image is still 2.1 megabyte. We're going to get rid of that. Let's go back over to the WebP converter. You can leave these values here or you can just hit clear log. If you find you've got too many values appearing, you might just want to clear it. Watch what happens above me. And over here, you're going to see some stuff up here. But watch what happens above, right? When I click keep main, and by the way, the main is the new image. So if it has scaled, that becomes the main image and the web peel. So if it started off as 5,000 pixels wide, and then you've scaled it to a different size, the new size is the main image. So keep main and thumbnail. And look, we've got clean up, delete, delete, delete. And you can see they've disappeared and then regenerate the thumbnail. Why is it regenerating the thumbnail? Because you do sometimes have to have that enabled to make sure they still appear over here. Let's go back over to WebP converted and you can see what it's done. And we now have the WebP image and the thumbnail, the JPEG image, which is now a WebP and the thumbnail and the PNG, which is now a WebP. Why does it say PNG there? That's how I titled it intentionally because I wanted you to see what was the PNG image and JPEG. If you don't believe me, rewind the video and you'll see they were the names I gave it. Do you remember how big these were? 
Seriously, rewind the video and look at all of the sizes we had there before I hit any single button over here. Look at what we've got now. The biggest one is 135, 123, 56. That has now saw it out. And just to make a point, once this is done, because these were legacy images before I activate the code snippet, I'm going to drop into my library. I'm, I've got another image. So here's my image. It's a 3814 pixel wide. It's called 05 hyphen red. So it should appear somewhere around here. Watch what happens when I drop it. It's instantly gone and given me the PNG and it's given me the 150 version. And I'm going to go back into this image. It's called 05 red and it's 1920. At no point did you get the 3840 land there and stay there. It's gone. You don't have to go in and click any of these buttons because it's already done for you. But what would have happened if I had clicked it just out of curiosity? I'm going to click convert scale and it's probably going to say skipped. You know why it's skipped? Because the images are already maximum 1920 because it's already done it. And it doesn't need to reconvert either. And if I say keep main and thumbnail, well, there's nothing to delete because they're not there in the first place because it's handled it and it's gone and regenerated anyway. It always does that as a bit of best practice, cool kind of thing. And you can clear the log. None of the other files in the library have been removed. The PowerPoint, the PDF, the MP4 movie. The, I mean, look, if I go into the movie, look, the movies are still playing. MP3 over here, so if I hit it, nothing's disappeared. I'm now going to tell you about that website that was four gigabytes. It's because their website had 4,145 images. I am not lying. I've got the values right here. I went in and tested this out on a staged version of their website. Remember, it's just over four gigabytes. I went and stuck the code snippet in, activated and run it. 4,145 images. Some of them were already WebP, but the bulk of them were legacy images that were like big PNGs. It took just under half an hour to convert, create the WebP, delete the other sized images, has gone from just over four gigabytes to about 900 megabytes. 900 megabytes is still pretty damn big, but they have got loads of posts. They've got a directory website. They've got lots of stuff going on, but they have now lost over 3.3 gigabytes. This is big because if you are not aware of what's being happening in your files and database, when you load images and you're not getting rid of them, when your host provider says, hang on, your website's getting too big and you're left there scratching your head and you go over here and go, well, I can't see those images. And when you do find out that you have loads of images in your database, you're then manually deleting them or you're using a tool and then you start to worry if it's going to do more damage than good. By the way, before you use any code snippet, please take a backup of your website. Test that on a staging site as well. But I'm telling you, this is working. But I'm going back into the WebP converter to show you one other little neat trick. So I went and set my sizes to be 1920. We know that everything is maximum 1920. And if you're below that, it maintains your size. What if you decide to set everything to be 500? Every image will now be scaled to be 500. If you're below that, it's fine. So if you know you want one of your images to be 1920, you might not want to do what I'm going to show you. But if you know that your images, like even on your hero banner and on your page, they're never going to be more than 500. In fact, let's just go and set them to be uh, 650. I just want to show you how this works, okay? And keep an eye on what we have going on over here with our sizes. We've got 135, 135, 123, and 56. So I'm now going to click set max size, okay? And it now says the maximum width is set to be 650. Then I'm going to hit convert scale to WebP. And what will happen is it's now going to start converting and you can see it. It's converting them to 650. And can you see the sizes? Did you notice the change? 28, 27, and we've got 36. And I'm just going to click that. I always like to do that. We go back over to my library now. Do you remember my images? Look at that, 650, 650. And that is also a 650. But if I was to now drop a brand new image into here, it's another 3840. It's called 06 large PNG. Watch what happens above me as I drop that in. You're going to see it appear there in 06. And look, it is now 29 kilobytes. Why? Because we went and set the size, if I go and click that, you'll see that it's now set to be 650. So please be using a little bit of caution because once you do that, it will maintain that until you go and set that back to be 1920. And then you go and hit set max size. You don't need to scale or convert anything that you got at the moment because you've already done what you want to do with them. 
If I go back over to my library now, these images are still going to be 650 because I went and scaled them all down. And if I drop in another image, and this is called 07 again, keep an eye above me. I'm going to drop it in and you can see it there. It's now 161. Why is it I'm much larger? Well, because I set my size to 1920 and I hit set, I didn't click the buttons because you, you just have to set it. And every time you upload, it then sets the maximum size. If we just go and have a look at all of these, they're all 650, 650. And then we get the 1920. You can see that I was trying out lots of poses being very silly. But that's basically it. That is the WebP converter for you. And like I said, if you want to leave the size set at 1920, I do mention it over here. Leave it as that if you're a bit unsure. Just go and convert all of your images. If they're already a WebP, it won't touch them. If they are bigger than 1920, it will touch them. So it brings everything into scale, convert to WebP, and you click that to just get rid of extra sizes that you've got stuck in your files and database. And don't forget to clear the log. It's not a bad idea to do that, I think. What I've created here means a lot to me. Um, it's because I've seen so many people get exploited or taken advantage of when their website is creaking, it's too big. They're trying to use other solution. Developer gets in touch. They reach out to someone. They get taken advantage of or they install a tool or they pay for something and they think it's working, but it's not properly doing exactly what they thought. And sometimes so many overlook the files and databases in the back end. And I, I, I feel for them. I've, I've seen people fall apart because the website is their business and they're using it to generate money. And I really think this code snippet, in fact, this entire tool, right? makes a huge difference because the code snippet is the snippet that I'm running on the code snippets plugin, but it's the work and effort, blood, guts, and sweat that I've put into getting this to be as intuitive and easy to use for anyone, whether you're a designer, whether you're a developer, whether you're a user. I, um, this, this really does mean a lot to me. Okay. Um, it means it means a lot and I, I hope this makes a difference and I hope it's appreciated and people start taking me a little bit more seriously in the WordPress world because I, I know a lot of people don't and they think I just churn out videos and create codes or use page builders or whatnot and, you know, if I'm not part of the right club or whatever, no one takes notice, but please give this a go. Take a backup, take, take a staging site, but please don't discount or disregard what you have here. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I'd love to hear your comments and your thoughts. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'm going to see you soon.